Hello everyone and welcome back. This episode is all about taking measurements. We saw how the room works, where things are placed and why things are the way they are. We took care of dialing in all of the preferences and everything to set up RAW. It's now time. I have a pair of speakers that I have never calibrated in this room. We're gonna do it together. Let's go. The first thing I've done is setting up my microphone in the position we discussed in the previous episodes. So everything is ready, at least for the first measurement or for calibrating the volumes here. We're gonna calibrate my pair of SM100s. They are placed on speaker stands that are motorized so I can decide which height they're gonna sit on. And so far I've found a position that I quite like that curious enough has the tweeter pretty much at the same height that my 802 ends have. So we're gonna use that fixed position. Obviously, if things are gonna get moved in height, calibrations should be redone and assessed you know, at different levels. But we're gonna keep them where they are. They're near field speakers and they're pretty far. They are on the midfield sort of class right now. Nevertheless, I'm curious because they don't sound bad for as far uh, as I can hear. So let's keep going. The microphone is in its position. I've placed cameras with a wide angle that will allow you to see where I'm going in the room. The first thing that I would do is check that my microphone is recording while I'm going and clear this area for sure. So let's do this. I wanna move this chair away, even if it's realistic to think that the chair will be here. It will just be a hassle for me to have laying around. So let's do it. I've placed the chair pretty much where I had it when I calibrated the 802s. It doesn't really matter, but I decided it should stay there, right? So now we're gonna have a measurement for my microphone. I wanna know which kind of loudness I have here. And to do this, we gotta go into REW. Here we are in REW. I'm gonna go in SPL meter mode, which opens this window and which I can clearly see their signal that my mic is picking up while I'm talking close to it, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my SPL meter set to DBC and slow to know which kind of loudness I have right on top of this microphone. To do it, I'm gonna have to go to calibrate. I'm gonna have to choose use rev speaker cal signal. And I am gonna mute my speakers here. This is my monitor controller. It's got volume, stepped. It's got a mute right and a mute left. These are probably the two controls you're gonna see me toggle along with the volume. So what I wanna do here is have a very low volume. Things are gonna get muted. I can dim the signal if I want. I can make it mono, flip phase on either channel and switch to alternate speakers, which I don't wanna do right now. So very low volume, muted left and right. I'm gonna click on OK. And what I have now is REW is sending a signal through my left speaker. And it's just a noise that we're gonna measure. Now you can't hear it because the speakers are muted, but I'm gonna unmute them and we're gonna listen to it. Now this is very low. What I wanna read here on my SPL meter is about 75 SPL. 0, something like that, 75 dB SPL. So let's try this. Okay, so this is 75.4. And this was the kind of average I was reading on the SPL meter. I can now turn it off and I know, and I'm gonna mark it, that at this volume level, my left channel is sort of like delivering 75 dBC, which is gonna calibrate my REW to know 
what it means for the microphone in that position to pick up 75.4 in terms of gain that it's outputting through the input channel. Does it make sense? So it's linking the loudness in the room to the actual loudness captured by the mic. I'm going to go to finished. And now I get an inf an info pane that says that the maximum SPL in this calibration is going to be 125 dBs. We're clearly never going to need to go even close to 100, so it's okay. Let's try and see where we are right now. Everything is calibrated. We can proceed to the first measure. I'm going to move this thing out of the way. I'm going to close this part. And now we're ready to go to measure. So this pane is super important. The measurement window is really good. So let's see what it's all about. We can measure SPL or impedance. We want to do SPL. We can name these measurement. We will have a sort of like a preview of its appearance. We can add numbers, dates, or uses enter. That's also good. And we can add all sorts of notes. Uh, we can keep the notes for the next measurements, if that is cool. And we have a starting frequency and an ending frequency. So this is a good time to make sure the interface is set at 48 kilohertz because we want to go up to 24K, which is what I did. And I'm going to start from 10. Although these speakers, they don't have it. We can't go to 10 hertz. I wish they could, but they can't. They're poor near field, they're very awesome near field speakers, but they don't get that low. We want to get a level of minus 12 dBFS. That's what we said. We're going to tell the software to abort if there is heavy input clipping. Probably not, but if it's too loud, we want to drop it. Uh, we want to abort maybe above a certain SPL limit. I don't think that's necessary. We're safe with my sort of calibration. We have a preview of this. And now we have to choose which kind of sweep we want to send. So. The sweep length is incredibly important. The longer the sweep, the better the signal to noise ratio. But I want to show you three methods to calibrate your room. One is going to be a single point. One is going to be a multi point. We're going to do maybe seven. And one is going to be a multi microphone technique. So what I want now just to do is a quick test. So I'm going to choose the, the shorter sweep length, which is the fastest. It has the lowest, like less proficient signal to noise ratio. We don't care. It's faster. It's going to keep us on our toes and it's better. But eventually, once we settle down on a method I like personally, we're going to use the longer one because it takes a longer amount of time, but it has better signal to noise ratio. How many repetitions do we want to use? Well, right now we can only do one because we're doing acoustic timing references. So if you go no timing reference, then you can do more. But as I said, we're going to use acoustic timing reference. Let's recap what this does. We're going to send a fast chirp from the left speaker and we're going to compare it with another chirp from the right speaker. This is going to tell us which speaker is closer to us, to the listening spot, right? If it's a couple millimeters, we don't care. If it's half a meter, then maybe we've got to redo it, right? We don't set any offset. We don't have any technical issue or something to compare to. So we go to zero, we take it from there. We sample rate with the playback from REW. We don't have a measurement file. I'm going to have the sweep generated by REW. The sample rate is 48 kilohertz. We take one measurement and we have it wait. How much? I would say eight seconds before the sweep starts. The delay is also super important. We want to have enough time to Actually, I'm sitting on my knees right now. So I want to stand up, run away before the sweep hits the mic. So I'm going to use seven, eight seconds. Let's go with eight. That's going to be plenty of time. Set it up so you don't have to run through your room and, you know, be safe, right? Eight seconds should be enough. We're going to output a signal from play 15, which is my left monitor channel. We're going to ref as a reference. 16, which is our right channel. We have our calibration file set. 
right? Good to double check. And our input is Aurora Record 3, which we tried, everything works. And you can see there's green levels here. If I snap my finger, you see that going up and down, the mic is working. So right now we're gonna do the first approach, single point measurement. The microphone is standing exactly halfway through here at my ear height when I'm sitting, believe it or not, that's how it is. And I'm gonna hit start and then I'm gonna leave and you're gonna see me from the other camera. We're gonna just stay super silent. The room is set the best way, all the curtains are pulled, things are set up exactly how it should be in my optimal mixing situation. I gotta make sure I don't touch the volume there, but I gotta make sure I open my left channel, obviously, because otherwise we're not gonna get signal through the speakers, right? Also, I'm gonna open the right one because we have timing references coming from the right. So we're measuring the left, we're timing it from the right. It is very important that I name this. So I'm gonna call it one point L. And here in the notes, I could write SM100 on stance H, which is height. I'm gonna double check. Give me a second. 83. And they are actually uh, toe in 10 degrees. This is going to be kept for the next measurement, which means we're always going to have this piece of information. I'm going to do this so everything else is there. SM100 on stands, height 83, that's what I read on my motorized speaker, um, speaker stands, towing 10 degrees because they're just ever so slightly towed in. They're not really looking at the center of the triangle. They sounded better this way. So we're going to Click start and off we go. Plenty of time to leave. I'm gonna sit or actually stand here and and here we go. Everything was pretty safe. We got our first measurement. It doesn't really matter where things are right now but we need to take a second measurement, you guessed it, which is gonna be our right speaker. So we go measure, we call it R. I actually don't need date time, this just slipped. So I'm gonna use, use as entered, doesn't matter. And we're gonna do the same thing, but we need to measure channel 16. Start and leave. Awesome. 